CSS 1490 AM in Amsterdam and WKAG uh, 1120 in St. Johnsville as well. And we do have a guest with us today. I'll introduce him in, in a couple of minutes. Um, and we will be taking calls at 843-2500 as well. Our guest today will be talking about music and also uh, if, if we have time, because sometimes when I have someone on to talk about two subjects, we never get to the second one. But if we talk about the second subject, it will be antiques and collectibles. So you might want to call in about uh, uh, one of those issues. Next week is the day before Easter. So we're going to have an open line. I don't think I'm going to have a guest. Uh, some of the time I hope to commit to uh, talking about Easter. Maybe you have a favorite Easter memory. Maybe you want to talk about what you're doing for Easter this year. Maybe you want to talk about what Easter means to you. And, but we will have an open line too, so you'll be able to call in and talk about other things. And if you have not liked us on Facebook yet, we do have a Facebook page. Please uh, like us on Facebook. Uh, I think we're up to 101 likes so far. But the good thing is not, not just liking us, but on Facebook, you will uh, get the latest information about our show, and you'll be able to find links to past shows. If you're going away and you miss a show, you'll be able to, uh, uh, there's a link there that you'll be able to click on and, and uh, listen to it. Now, I do have two trivia questions today related to music, but there's no prize this week. I, I can't afford to give a prize out every, every time I have trivia questions, but these are related to music. Now, first of all, let me mention that the person who won the most Grammys ever is Sir Georg Solti, who happens to be a classical and operatic uh, director, conductor, and so on. But in second place are two American musicians, tied for second place with 27 Grammys each. Who are they? I'd like to know. Uh, well, I do know. But if you know, you can call in and give us the answer. Also, sort of connected to the Mohawk Valley, uh, there's another musician who also wrote poetry and novels. He wrote a novel in 1966 in which Kateri Tekawitha was one of the main characters. Who is that musician? If you know the answer, you can call in today with that. Now, we've all been all hearing a lot about Sawyer Fredericks. He's been on The Voice, which I have to be honest with you, I've never watched, but I've watched him on YouTube when he was on The Voice. Uh, he's from the town of Glen, lives on a farm out there, homeschooled. Uh, and quite a musician, but that got me thinking about local talent, you know, not just about music, but art. I don't know if you've ever been to the Hageman Art Show, but there's fabulous art up there, and you think, none of these people make it in the big time, but it's still fantastic art, and you know, maybe we'll get into that today. Why do some people make it in the big time? Why do some people not, when they seem to have uh, great talent? But that got me thinking about musicians as well in this area, uh, Alex Torres, I believe he played at the White House once. Uh, Maria Riccio, Sarah Milanovic from the town of Florida, who's going to be on the show uh, one of these days when she comes home. She's a great f fiddle player. For some of you old timers, you remember Tony Brooks. And uh, out in Utica, those of you out that way, Joe Bonamassas from Utica, great guitarist. So today we have with us a local musician who is a very good musician and also incredibly knowledgeable about music. If I want to know something about films, I call my son David. If I want to know something about books, I call my son John. If I want to know something about animals, I call my daughter Rachel. If I want to know something about music, I talk to Gary Wager, who is our guest today. Welcome, Gary. Good morning. It's always good to be with you, Dan. Well, it's good to have you here. I, I, we've known each other for a while now. I was thinking today, how long has it been? I'm not really sure. Maybe 15 years or so? Close to 20, yeah, in that, right in that pocket. Right. And we actually got to know each other through, you know, because we're both interested in collectibles, antiques. Me, it's more uh, old books and old paper stuff than anything, whereas Gary's interests are different. We'll get into that later. But, you know, one night I was listening to a radio show called Echoes on another station. Maybe some of you listen to it. It's on 160 stations across the United States. It plays for two hours every night. It's a great show to try to go to sleep with because it really relaxes you. And it's, it's, it's had some major figures on there like Peter Gabriel and Enya and so on. Well, one night I kind of was half asleep and all of a sudden I heard the word Amsterdam, New York. Well, right away I, I woke up all the way. But not only did I hear the words Amsterdam, New York, I heard the words Gary Wager. And then I really woke up. I said, wow, Gary's on this program. And uh, 
I, w I was really impressed when I heard you on that show, Gary. Uh, and uh, I, I listened to, you know, a cut of your album on that show. How did your music end up on Echoes? I mean, what did you have to do to get on that? Uh, that's, that's a long story in that once the music was actually finished, I was almost too tired to do anything with it. It was a three and a half year journey. But to answer that question, they happened to be at Parkway Music. Uh, my friends Matt and Tom own that store. It's a wonderful store. And there was a writer from the Times Union. And unfortunately, I really can't remember his name. But we started talking. Uh, we had known each other in the business. And the question came up, well, what are you doing lately? And I mentioned that I had just come out with a CD. And uh, I, I gave it to him. He listened to it. The next thing he knew, uh, he, he did a review in the Times Union. And when I read it, it was his article that gave me the idea to actually send it to Echoes because he said that the music sounds like it belongs on Echoes. I had never heard of Echoes. So uh, I, I, I took the cue and actually <laughs> sent the CD. Next thing you know, I, I, I received a letter saying that it would be on rotation. And uh, they did play it quite a bit. So uh, I want, I'm hoping to play a, a one song from your uh, album. What, what's the name of your album? It was Age of an Aquarian. And uh, I am an Aquarius as far as the Zodiac goes, and, and it just came together. That's the name of it. I'm really not sure what it means, other than uh, I matured enough as a musician to actually play an acoustic guitar by itself and give respect to melody and dynamic and find myself as, as a person through the guitar, so to speak, in another language, which was a lot of fun and really grueling. Well, I was going to play a song. I wanted to play a, a song from your album, but I'm having trouble finding it on the computer here for some reason. If I find it later, we will play it. It's called The Butterfly Song, which mm. is my favorite song from your album. And I believe in the, in the uh, song you're trying to simulate a butterfly to a certain extent. Well, as the song progressed, sometimes you need to label a, a tune in a, in a working title manner, and, the, and that song did not start out as the butterfly song it was my, my fiance Jill who heard the song and said it sounds like a, a butterfly my, my uh, title for that song was some kind of a French <laughs> word taking uh, from the word ascend and it was a sandre or something like this uh, but as the song evolved it was more like a butterfly and I said hey you know what it is a butterfly song it flutters uh, the meters not great <laughs> But it expresses itself in a manner that uh, you would have to pay attention to to find out what the, where the song's going because you're really not sure. There's really no beat or direction. It's a, yeah, it flutters a little bit, and so sometimes you need to be open to what other people perceive your work is, and it takes you down a road uh, to open up the receptors of other people and how they perceive your music. Okay, um, Gary, I think I found your song. Now let's see if we can, uh, <laughs> if I can play it or not. That's the next problem because I'm not sure which of these uh, dials I'm supposed to be using for it. But let me try this one here. There we go. I find that a beautiful, beautiful song. And, uh, but have you always played the acoustic guitar? I mean, this album is acoustic, but I've seen pictures of you where you look like a heavy metal rocker or something like that. And I was. I was almost afraid of the acoustic guitar. There's no place to hide. There's right. no distortion. You're not playing through your name. You lose the sustain, the dynamics, and ability to switch the tone from an electric guitar to acoustic, it's unmasking. It's dangerous uh, as a guitar player because I've always respected and feared music, so I was always a little nervous 
to be unmasked and play the acoustic guitar, not only because it was a guitar, but in an orchestral manner to try to make some sense out of music. Very, very tough. I was an electronic guy. I, I loved Marshalls. I liked loud guitars. I wanted to play fast. I wanted to play like other people. Well, well who were some of your, um, I don't know, heroes, influences, whatever you want to call them when you were younger? When I was young, we had all kinds of music in the house. But as far as a guitar player, and I'd already heard the Beatles. Right. I was too young to grasp what they were doing. I heard the Stones. I was singing along to songs that were played on the radio, and I loved all of it. The box tops, if it was on the radio, I, I wanted to hear it. Right. Even Herb Alpert. Mm. Oh, I, I like a lot of Herb Alpert it's stuff. It's bouncy. It's fun. Yeah. And very successful. He brought something new to the form of popular music, and it flew well. My dad brought home a jazz guitarist, and I didn't like jazz at all. I didn't understand it. Right. But it, the guy's name was Wes Montgomery who had some success in the 1950s, but by the time the 1960s had rolled around, his success came from doing covers mm. of other music right. in his style that evolved the whole time as well. He was an octave player and was strong on melody. When I heard him, the name of the record was on A&M, was A Day in the Life, which I had no idea was a Beatles song at the time, and I heard this song was like, if I was to play guitar, this is the guy I want to sound like. Right. His name was Wes Montgomery. Uh, and at the height of his fame and financial success, uh, it was on A&M. Uh, Herb Alpert was actually the guy that brought him into that fold. He had been on a couple other labels before that. But his records were selling well. They were gate folds. There was mm. a lot of money behind him. Um, he passed away in 1968 right at the height. And again, I didn't know that at the time, but I fell in love with his music and his renditions of other people's music. Well, when did you uh, start uh, playing the guitar? How old were you? Do you remember? Uh, you know, I was 10. Mm. I was horrible. The guitar was bigger than me. Uh, I, I had no idea what rhythm was to translate it over to another instrument or to another language. If I was just standing there, I could tap my foot along, but as far as using your wrist or even try to sound like other people it was a battle i was horrible um, and i was told i was going to be a hopeless case <laughs> really? by a teacher yeah on crane street and you know what if i heard what i heard from that guy i probably would have said the same thing or at least thought it maybe not said well well there's a video on uh, i think it's on sawyer frederick's site where he's playing the guitar when he's 11 and he's trying to mm. do a credence clearwater revival song and he you know he was struggling so, uh, you know, you can come a long way in a short time when you're young, I think, anyway. It seems <coughs> there are some instruments that are more friendly to youth. Uh, the violin is one. Uh, yes. The piano is another one. The guitar is a little unforgiving in that you have to grow into it if you want to make sense about what it is. You do need some strength. And uh, finally, uh, you know, I did go into the guitar, but then other interests came. I was still in high school. I loved sports. Right. You know, I was a punk. Right. You know, I was doing things that had nothing to do with music, but may maybe get an idea from the music that I was listening to right. and had fun that way. But uh, somewhere around 19, uh, I realized that I didn't have a lot going for myself. So I really became a disciplined person with the guitar. And in a six month period, I had the guitar around my neck for somewhere between four and eight hours a day. Wow. And after those six months that I was at least a valid musician that was not ashamed to go out and audition for a band right so it did take me all that time to, you know i did a lot more than sure. just playing the guitar but it was around me and you do have to take these things seriously at some point right and when you get fluent in the language you're then able to have some fun and, and find out who you are as a person and it's, it's very exciting and very rewarding very difficult uh, in some cases, not even just the playing, but the hardships that come with any starving artist sure. venture. And so if it's not in your heart, if it's not on your mind, if it doesn't give you energy, it's probably, you're going to drop it. You'll get weeded out at some point. Right. Our, our guest today is Gary Wager, and this is uh, Valley Vox, your host, Dan Weaver, on AM 1490 WCSS Amsterdam and AM 1120 WKAJ in St. Johnsville. We welcome your calls. I believe I missed a call back there when I was trying to uh, find Gary's song on the computer. So uh, uh, this is a new thing for me today. Last week was the first time I took calls. Today I'm trying to take calls and 
uh, used a computer to play some music, which is uh, uh, new for me, but we'll manage. Anyway, Gary, were you in some groups when you were younger, and where did you play, and, and how popular were you, and did you travel, and so on and so forth? It was all hard work. It's hard to remember everything that right. happened in those days because you're on a, a learning curve and you want to not lose what you've gained in the way of knowledge. So sometimes experience and the experiences that you have really escape the spirit of the times of why you were there in the first place, which in those days was for me to be was really a valid musician, some somebody that could be uh, looked at as others as a competent uh, instrumentalist. Now you told me earlier your brother was in a band with you. So how did that work out? The well, two that was that. I mean, we had a couple knocks as brothers, but as a musician, he's a fine musician, very cognizant of the homework uh, and the knowledge that you need to at least bring yourself to a point. He loved musicians. Uh, he loved Buddy Rich. He loved complicated solos right and he really worked at it mm. so it was overall a great experience to play with michael it's very professional showed up knew the parts you really couldn't ask for anything more out of a teammate right so there was a blessing that i was able to uh, play with my twin brother michael many bands mm. and, and you also worked for drone sound for years uh, how, how yeah. many years was that gee whiz somewhere <laughs> between 12 and 15 and you know there's another whole side of music that you're exposed to and that's equipment right y you can experiment with guitar playing you can experiment with your voice and lyrics but it's the equipment a lot of times that helps define what people are going to hear and how much control you have of what you want to sound like mm -hmm. so sometimes spending the real good money on real good equipment goes a lot further than just hooking up to something that's available you have to want to sound good to sound good, and it it, it requires some homework. Now, did Drum Sound only sold equipment? Did they sell records and CDs and that kind of stuff too? Do you, you know? I think there was a time Drum Sound really started in 1968, and mm -hmm. I, they did spread out into those. But when I was working there, they didn't really have records or, or cassettes or anything. We did sell sheet music, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I was exposed to a guy there who. I dismissed. You're right. <laughs> it was Pete Seeger. It was like, gee whiz, who cares oh. about this, right? Well, that's being ignorant. That's being uh, not exposed to it. Mm -hmm. um, he was before my time. Right. Did, I didn't understand his influence. In fact, uh, I was lucky enough through Age of Aquarium to actually have a relationship with Pete Seeger after I became enlightened. That's great. Yes, I have a couple letters of him, and I actually then fell in love with him. Sure. But How I could you not? <laughs> what a sweetheart. Yeah. I'll tell you, one of the greatest things about him, besides his willingness to embrace humanity, yeah. was he never changed. Right. Even That's through all true. the years, he was accused of being a communist. Right. He was accused of all kinds of things and was blacklisted for something like 17 or 18 years. And here we have a, a beautiful soul, a guy who only wanted to do good who eventually worked the situation in his favor but because he was blacklisted he reached out to the youth and did college tours so he embedded himself essentially in the youth of america in the 1950s mm. and helped start the folk movement which was a monster in the 1960s uh, even starting with uh, say the kingston trio these people were around but joan baez had some kind of fluke million seller album in 1959 people don't realize really? that as an 18 year old woman uh, she really hit a home run with you know on some obscure label i think it was vanguard mm -hmm. and you know i don't remember okay it was before my time but you you know the hits that ellis presley had you couldn't remember chuck berry songs so i don't know if joan baez had any singles but her impact in the music world and those who were ready to hear some a new style college kids right so the million lps mm. in 1959 this is unheard of right but without pete seeger this may have been impossible and, and even sh not too many years before he died he was doing albums he did one with uh, bruce springsteen doing uh, songs like the eric mm -hmm. canal song they did on that album yeah, yeah. The folk songs unchanging right full of energy always had a great heart to embrace humanity and try to involve people to get together and do good things right amazing 
Our phone number here is 843-2500 if you want to call and chime in about music, uh, local musicians. If you want to talk to Gary, ask Gary a question or anything, please feel free to call in. Now, Gary, you told me once, or maybe more than once, that most of the music from the last 75 years or so has been kind of aimed at teenagers. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain what you mean by that? And, and what, you know, what does that mean for music? How has that affected music? You know, these are tough questions, but the evidence plainly points to this fact, almost a phenomenon, in that music, which had been around since the creation of man, has always been there. Right. Music was made for adults, essentially adults. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of old 78s, there are arias, there are operas, there are adult right. subject songs. Uh, not so much for kids and I've heard many vocalists from the 20s and they sound like they're singing out of a, a blowhorn and they were uh, the electronic microphone hadn't been perfected and, and didn't quite relate the purity of uh, a voice a human voice now in the 30s that changed we had electronic microphones that were probably run on vacuum tubes and, and the depth of tone that you could get out of this was never available before so right. here we have recordings that are starting to involve humanity in the way that we hear each other talk now we can hear each other singing and this fella came around his name was Feng Sinatra he was a singing waiter he had the right attitude he stuck with the program and uh, by the time May of 1941 came around I think that he was still singing with Harry James but he was wildly popular through the advent of many people having a radio mm -hmm. in their home which hadn't happened sure. before either uh, of, of pictures uh, he was a, a great looking guy he looked like a kid he was mm. about 26 but he looked like he was 16 he was the first we would call teen idol right so through the media and all these goodies like records and phonographs and radio somewhere between the ages of 12 and 25 uh, girls and women just took to this guy he was a teen idol before 1941 music was geared toward adults after the business of music proved now that we could really make a ton of money by selling what's popular it doesn't mean it's difficult in music or you're not maybe breaking new grounds this is the beginning of a different approach to the people involved in the business of making music that they would now market good-looking well-talented young people uh, to sell records sure and this is 1941 and it slowly happened and I would say by the mid to late 50s this this was a done deal there was no question about where the record business was going and when the Beatles came along it really really took off but but I mean how is that affected you, you let's say you have somebody who's talented but they're not good looking they're or whatever maybe they have other deficiencies mm. I mean I, I know some great mu musicians that I listen to who uh, you know they tour the country maybe they go to uh, Great Britain but but they're never played on on most radio stations don't play them uh, you talk to people they never heard of them I mean uh, so it must have had an influence some of these people kind of get left out ignored in the business they get left out but within the business they heavily influence other artists and sometimes they get their just due and sometimes they don't and it's it's a dog eat dog world and sometimes van gogh for instance mm. you get pushed aside right whether it's in your lifetime or not but your work still stands and i think that if a person is genuine in what they're doing you could stand behind your work and and not really dream about being a superstar that has all kinds of money and sure. all this kind of stuff so if you're there for the right reason you're probably going to continue to do it for as long as you want to mm -hmm. whereas you start making compromises in the business and get away from why you started in the first place and integrity is a difficult thing to keep in the entertainment business sure is yeah and, and, you know i mean it's become a celebrity well you give up a lot of things mm -hmm. and and if you're not careful you can give up your integrity it's one well, of you can things. lose yourself forget who you are and then you really start caring about the other people around you in that the, this money machine that you have going whether it's on a regional level or not mm -hmm. that you're you almost feel responsible to keep everybody going right and, and there's that 
part of it too. So sometimes these compromises are based on you know really a love and a care for the other people that you're around. So again, you really have to watch your where you're going and, and, sure. and why you're going there, and it all has to make sense. And you need the rest and sleep well. So you don't want to have questions roaming in your mind when you're when you're hitting the sack. Well, we've got to take a break in a couple of minutes, but uh, I'm going to throw in a question here about people being ignored. How do you account for the fact that the Who never won a Grammy, Pink Floyd only won one, and you have that you have that with other musicians as well and other groups? It happens. Uh, the people that are awarding in the Grammys, I I don't know what their agenda is, and I, I'm not sure that any of those people deserved more or less. I really don't know. But if you take an artist like Elvis Presley, for example, who's, right, it, it really is doesn't matter whether you like him or you don't right. like besides the point right. as a singer as an entertainer he should be considered at the top of the heap maybe in the top 10 or 20 singers and entertainers in the, mm -hmm. the last 75 years no question about it did he ever win a grammy yeah for his gospel work. yeah almost all his grammys were for his gospel <laughs> music yeah totally. which is good his his gospel stuff is great and i mean that's where he got a lot of his start was singing i gospel. also think that the grammys in 1971 with who's next you hear that record <laughs> it's a little dangerous it's uh, hard rocking uh the mes message had uh, some rebellious tones in it and they I were bringing up subjects that i think people were shying away from at that time sure yeah that makes a lot of sense but uh, I know I had my son on. We talked about the Oscars, and you have the same phenomenon with the with the Oscars. You have people winning Oscars who you think shouldn't have. You have films winning it that you think, no, oh, yeah, really. And then you have films and actors and actresses who who never won one. So it's it's it, I guess it's the same across the board in every field. Yes. Uh, well, we got to take a break, and we'll come back with more f uh, from Gary Wager. We'll be back in a couple minutes. I'm Tim Everhart, and here's the latest weather, brought to you by Patriot Federal Bank. Located across from the Olympic Diner on Route 30 in Amsterdam, Erie Boulevard in Kanjahari, and across from the Holiday Inn on North Comrie Ave in Johnstown. Today, March 28th, more clouds than sunshine with scattered snow showers possible, cold and breezy at times, a high in the mid-30s. Tonight, decrease in clouds and rather cold, a low around 15. Tomorrow, mostly sunny. Temperatures will moderate a few degrees, a high of 45. I'm Tim Everhart, and that was the latest weather. Brought to you by your friends at Patriot Federal Bank. Hometown banking with the personal difference. St. Clair Furniture Refinishers, a small family owned and run business, taking great pride in restoring your long treasured family furniture with a process that begins by removing the old finish to reveal the woods beauty st Clair furniture refinishers can even repair or replicate certain pieces if they've been damaged each and every piece sees a hand rubbed finish which not only protects but brings out the natural beauty of the wood for the next generation to enjoy st Clair furniture refinishers now features upholstery for your home and even fitness equipment St. Clair still handles a variety of handyman needs, and Barbara has begun to build reclaimed wood art and custom pieces. Find St. Clair Furniture Refinishers online at RestoreIt, the number four, the letter U, dot com. Or call James or Barbara today at 518-772-9455 or 518-772-9492 for a free quote. That's RestoreIt4U.com. Restore it the number four, and the letter U, dot com for St. Clair Furniture Refinishers. For two years, I experienced sciatic pain. I could barely walk. I had to do something, especially since I'm a nurse on my feet all day, and I love to exercise. I reached out to Dr. Shen at St. Mary's in Amsterdam. He says, I'll take that pain away. And I said, really? And he says, yeah. When I woke up from surgery, my pain was gone. And now I'm back to enjoying the things I used to do. St. Mary's and Dr. Shen gave me my life back. Visit ChooseStMary's.com to learn more. Why have your back surgery anywhere else? Morning, Joe. Uh, it's got the CD with it. 
and I cut the gentleman off. I'm so sorry I did that. Yeah, hi, Joe. How did I lose you? Oh, oh you're back. Because I pushed the wrong button. Ah. Oh, it was not your fault. I back on after that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, I got that, uh... Swap Shop, 9 to 11 on Saturdays on WCSS 1490 AM in Amsterdam. The biggest selection of wines and spirits, the lowest prices every day. Convenience and friendly service, that's why you'll hear us say, we'll keep you in the best of spirits. Hi everybody, Swap Shop Joe here for my friends at West End Wine and Liquor. Bill and Lorraine feature a large selection of their favorite wines and liquors, great service, and some of the best prices in the area. They're located at 265 Division Street. Call them at 842-6111. And remember, West End Wine and Liquor is run by Amsterdam people for Amsterdam people. We'll keep you in the best of spirits. That's West End Wine and Liquor. 265 Division Street in Amsterdam. We'll keep you in the best of spirits. At Ace, we're known for being helpful, and we're always looking for new ways to do so. Well, guess what, neighbors? We're now even more helpful by saving you big right inside the store. That's because Ace offers instant savings to Ace Rewards members. All you have to do is be an Ace Rewards member when purchasing select products, and you'll save... You don't have to wait weeks to get your deals, because frankly, that's just not as helpful. Not an Ace Rewards member? That's no problem. You could just sign up when you get here to start taking advantage of our offers. It's as simple as that. Stop into the Riverfront Ace Hardware in the Riverfront Center in Amsterdam, or give them a call at 684-6100. So come in now and get instant savings at Ace, the helpful place. See store for details. Must be an Ace Rewards member to receive instant savings. Available through the end of the month. Good Time Oldies, 1498 at WCSS. And we're back on Valley Vox on WCSS 1490 AM and WKAJ 1120 AM in St. Johnsville. We're back with our guest Gary Wager. We're talking about music and I don't think we're going to get to our other subject. This seems to happen a lot on, a, on my show that I prepare a more than we ha ever have time for. But I asked you a question which is a bit of a problematic question and it, that is who or what individual or group or both, I guess we'll go with individual. What in individual do you think is the greatest musician or singer in the past 70, 75 years, let's say from World War II on? It's the kind of question that's going to bring you enemies. You can, there is no right answer. Uh, some people are going to disagree with w whatever you say. So, you know, if you take a college course in four years and you're asked to write a term paper to allow yourself to earn the degree, it has to be from your personal environment, from your personal experience, from how you view the world and how you would do the work that comes from a person that you emulate and over time at least for me <coughs> that guy has to be Pete Seeger only because he's entrenched in the American culture I'm not saying he was the best musician not saying he was the best vocalist but over the decades his influence was wide-ranging right until the last few years of his death which I think was last year was last year yes uh, he was he was speaking of his old age when he was in his 80s he was still splitting all his own firewood which is I find remarkable it, it, an amazing guy who did not change and who wrote songs that were accepted in different generations you know he wrote uh, the lion sleeps tonight yeah he had some huge hits with the weavers right <laughs> right yeah uh, he also uh, through his being banned here in the United States was able to travel to different parts of the world. So the seed that he planted, uh, again, him working with Bruce Springsteen and, and others and Johnny Cash, uh, and, and this was later on in his career, there's a great picture of him uh, during World War II. And he's just got this big smile on his face. He's playing that long neck banjo. Mm -hmm. Eleanor Roosevelt's in the picture. Right. He's in uniform. He served. Uh, 
during World War II. Controversial followed his heart. Who knew that he was going to marry a Japanese woman? Right. And at that time, people said, you know, what's what? But he followed his heart. Sure. He stayed true to his own life. And in the end, uh, the converts that he made through his uh, perseverance and his good work and his will to uh, just bring people together to accomplish things that were good, in my mind, throughout the decades, is, he, he, he gets it. Right. Well, I, I would put him up there, too. I don't know if I'd put him at the top, but I, he would be up there in my top, probably my top ten, for sure. Have, have your musical taste changed over the years? Yes, of course. Uh, even when I was a four or five year old kid, they played some songs on the radio. I didn't know who they were. I just liked them. Uh, uh, my taste has always been well, what's going to come, what's going to happen next. Uh, I had favorite bands for about three days. You know, then another week would come <laughs> and it's like, oh, this is the best thing I ever right. heard. And then, you, you know, I, I'm a guy that would play a 45, oh, gee whiz, I don't know, for four or five hours straight. And, and do that to this day. And I go backwards, there's so much music that even what's happening now, some is so exciting, but what you didn't hear, say from the 50s and 40s, still pack that same excitement. It's uh, archived recorded music, it's wonderful. Sure. Well, what I wanna do now is I wanna play a short clip from Sawyer Fredericks. I wanna talk briefly about him. Okay, maybe we won't. Yeah, here we go. I'm a woman in a year everything in a song. She loves me. I'm a woman. Okay, that is Sawyer Fredericks from uh, maybe a year ago or so. Mm. Uh, the song's called Short Temper. I believe he wrote it himself. Mm. So have you had a chance to listen to him at all? I have. There's a lot more listening that I could do, but I have heard enough to conclude mm -hmm. that he has many, many gifts. Right. He's gifted, and it's easy for me to see, and I, I'm not sure about this, but if I had to make a point about where I think Sawyer is going and where he's been. His foundation is rock solid. Mm -hmm. Wherever he came from it was absolutely nourishing, supportive, and encouraged, and there was enough love there to give Sawyer a certain freedom to find himself in a different idiom, right. which was music, and his willingness and his passion and his love for what he does is absolutely inspiring he has the ability and maybe already doing it to allow other people to feel better about themselves because he's the, he's present mm -hmm. he's singing he's coming from the heart guy's the real deal and i, I would say that his future has the uh, opportunity to be limitless and uh, of course i like many am rooting for this this beautiful sure. young man I, w I was impressed the first song he played on the voice was I'm a man of constant sorrow and I thought hey, kid what a great choice mm. now, here's a song that we know was recorded about a hundred years ago but but the song may actually go back two to three hundred years and it's been covered by so many people mm. it's just a an amazing piece It's a part of a, a of Mer you know Americana whatever you want to call it what, it was a great choice you know the other thing about his gifts is his strength that he's finding through humility and that all music hmm. is worth considering right. and if you can find a place for some music in your life and uh, shine your own unique individual light on that music he's doing that again he is has many gifts he, he's got it all right now and uh, it must be a very exciting sure. time he's a breath of fresh air right and uh, huge benefit to other people this is this is his uh, a 
ability and his privilege and I think he understands that at such a young age mm. again his where he came from uh, his wisdom and understanding is, is it really uniquely special how fun to be along for the ride definitely my only concern about him is his voice hasn't changed all the way yet now, do you think uh, that could affect him or will it make it better I mean you have people like Bob Dylan whose voice went through many changes you have uh, uh, other other musicians, uh, Levon Helm, you know, he went through cancer and his voice changed. And I, I love his voice after the change as much as before. Uh, Tom Waits, I believe his voice has changed over the years. So what do you think? You think that it'll be okay? Or are you, I'm, I know I'm putting you on the spot with well, that no, question. The idea of his journey far transcends whatever details might come up in his uh, growing up. And his strength again his foundation is going to adapt to whatever comes down the road he's always going to make again i haven't met him i've heard him uh, but my perception is he's always going to make the best available choices to what is open to him and i think that's again his other gift and his strength and his wisdom and humility is he's, he's got it covered right yeah uh, yeah you, you know and i mean there's always the possibility we've seen people from amsterdam who who say went to Hollywood, like Ruth, mm. Ruth Zakarian. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she's doing work out there, but she didn't make it to the big time, you know, like maybe we thought she was going to, like she was going to do what Kirk Douglas did, you know? Uh, but, so you never know. I mean, uh, even though uh, uh, Sawyer is riding high now, you don't know what's gonna happen down the road necessarily, you know? But yeah, I'm, I'm particularly was taken by the fact that he picked that song for his, uh, first time he was on that show I think many young people wouldn't have I think there's a lot of young people probably never heard of that song which so. again points to his unique ability to be an artist and invite everything in and put his own personal light on the subject that he loves and has passion for very special okay I want to uh, play another clip from uh, another local some other local talent Chris and Jocelyn aren't a Fort Plain uh, by the way this brother and sister who are still very very young are both at Harvard right now one of them was he was the valedictorian of his Fort Plain class she was a sal salutatorian of her class and now they're both at at Harvard but they are also great musicians and I want to play a clip from one of their songs as well. I'm a woman in a year everything. Wrong song. Let's try again. So, there we have Jocelyn Arndt. I, I like her voice myself. Um, this, this particular song has kind of a, a retro sound and feel to it, and I get the feel, feeling that she and her brother also uh, have explored mu music from the past. They're not just playing or listening to whatever you know the top 10 is right now or what have you. Have you had a chance to listen to any of hers? I, I haven't, but just by hearing what they've accomplished already as far as doing so well hmm. in school going to Harvard these kinds of accomplishments in, in general terms can come from fertile ground growing up again you, that environment of nourishment of encouragement perseverance and discipline the family must play an important role in these what both these doubt. both these uh, yes. them and also with Sawyer and, and the, the problem is that some musicians, when they go on, and I think this is why you stayed local, is because family was important to you, and you didn't want to give that up to go traveling around the world, the country, or what have you. I remember the turning point. I was in New York City. 
I was the guitar. I replaced two guitar players, electric. Again, I, I showed up for practice all the time. Right. I came to rehearsal with the goods, down pat, ready to go. Uh, as a responsible person and musician, I was down there, and we were getting carted around in limousines. It was nice. It really meant that you didn't really have to touch the equipment. It was nice. You walked in and played, and you got paid well to do it. But while I was down there, my wife at the time, Gail, was pregnant with my son Dylan. Uh, those party favors that had that come around in the business were, you know, propping up. Mm -hmm. uh, there were drugs, uh, bad attitudes, and, and uh, bad temptations, and um, no cell phones in those days. And after rehearsal one time, I'm down in New York, and Gail had called, and she said that she was having a, uh, some pain. Uh, with the pregnancy mm -hmm. and I asked myself what am, what am I doing here I don't want to be around this in fact I was kicked out of the office uh, they walked in and unfortunately there were some drugs there and asked me if I wanted some I said no thanks and they they told me to get out <laughs> <laughs> because you didn't want to take right. any drugs yep. that's incredible and, and, and that was the, a turning point for me is that in my view to be a good parent the first thing you have to do is be available I wasn't able to pursue uh, music and being a parent. Uh, there's only so much time in the day, sure. so you take a pick. So, uh, and, and then in the end, it actually worked out for me because now I'm working on music projects with my son Dylan, yeah. and um, he's got a few releases out there. It's very exciting. And who could ask for more? Maybe you relive live these things through love. In this case, it, it's my own son. Right. That, yeah, that's great. And, and I think I th the thing I like about Jocelyn and Chris aren't is, you know, they're not counting on necessarily becoming big stars. They that's why they're at Harvard. You know, they're getting an education. We've seen um, some actors. Jodie Foster did that. Which I think she went to Yale or someplace. So you know, th their their whole life isn't wrapped up in just mm -hmm. their music. They have something besides that. Something they can fall back on. But it's not just something to fall back on. It's their education is part of their life, and I'm sure it will play a role in their in their music as well. So you said you're working on other projects. How about are you planning? An, I mean, th this album uh, you actually did a few years ago. Have you been working on any other albums since? Or well, at the time of its release, I was heavily into it and had enough material to do another one. I don't even know if I have those songs recorded to pick them up anyway. But uh, there has to be a return at least. Uh, commensurate to your life there's 24 hours in a sure. day and it really became a one and a half to two hour chore just to keep myself at that level to perform that kind of music uh, at any time and you know life presents other opportunities mm -hmm. of uh, more fun and I had to let that go and pursue other uh, things like collecting Amsterdam items right perhaps so the passion for life is still there it may not be on a guitar you know I've met many musicians over the years that needed to play a guitar every day right. I was never that guy right uh, but when I'm in I'm in all in mm -hmm. and I've always taken it seriously and I've always been somewhat fearful of music in that if you come up short you've yeah. cheapened the art and that's always been in my mind I don't know how that happened but I was glad it was there that, that's that's a good point I, I kind of that way about my writing too I don't want to compromise and the few times I have I felt terrible you know I've written something to try to you know with some motivation that really wasn't pure and uh, you know it just makes you feel lousy unless you're a person without any integrity at all and you just you know you're a, you're a hack so anyway you know you mentioned collecting Amsterdam items I don't know if that calls I guess that calls for us let's go ahead and take that well, somebody else already did so I guess it wasn't uh, you what you know you've been also messed around with collectibles I shouldn't say messed around because you're serious about it you've been involved with collectibles and antiques for a long time mm -hmm. so what things you collect what what has really been your passion in collecting yeah, again it's it starts out by happenstance I had really no idea what I was doing or why I was doing it but it was fun for me uh, I was gonna start a music store coming off from drum sound uh, from actually the the guys that were going to start Parkway, so we were buying instruments. And go ahead and take the call. Okay. Good morning, you're on Valley Vox. Hey, good morning. This is Big Al from up here in Nelson. Hi, Big Al. <laughs> Better known as the guy in the morning. 
uh, WKAJ. Okay, great. But, uh, yeah, I... Uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was uh, listening to the show today, and uh, it was very interesting. Um, I'm trying to figure out... I haven't heard this gentleman that, that or, you know, you guys that play the music, but... Uh, there was some, you know, there's some great talent around the area, and a lot of the bands and people that I meet are, are pretty fantastic. Yeah, there, there are, there's amazing talent, and uh, you know, sometimes people think, ah, oh, a place like Amsterdam, or Fultonville, or Glen, or Fort Plain, what the heck good can come out of there, or St. Johnsville, and yet, you look at many successful people. I mean, where did where did uh, where did Johnny Cash come from? Dias, Arkansas. Where the heck is that? You know, it's a little mm -hmm. crossroads. Uh, so uh, many great musicians, artists, so on, come from very very small towns, similar to what we have here in the Mohawk Valley. All right. I was up uh, last night at uh, St. Johnsville School, and for the junior high uh, concert they have up there. They've got a jazz band that'll knock your socks off. Really? For junior hires, yep. Um, fortunately enough, my grandson's in that, as well as he plays he plays drums, he plays uh, plays saxophone in that band, but and he plays guitar the whole nine yards. <clears throat> and my son used to uh, play with Ed Licata with um, the Surf Dogs and a bunch of other different ones. And those guys I liked right. a lot. Well, I'll let you go. Okay, you keep well, up your good work. Yeah, thank you for calling. We appreciate it very much. No problem, and I uh, will PR your show and uh, you know during a week. Thank you. We're on from what eleven to twelve. Eleven to twelve on Saturdays. All righty. All well, right. Thank I'll you, Al. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Take much. it easy, guys. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Well, we only have. Uh, about three minutes left, and before I, we continue on with this, I just uh, since no one called in with the answers to to my questions, I'm going to go ahead and give the answers. The two Americans who uh, won the most Grammys and who are tied for second place overall, Gary, you want to try? You know, I want to pick. I, I heard you say something. I'm probably wrong, but is, is John Williams one of them? No. <laughs> it, it, th these will probably surprise you. Quincy Jones and Allison Krauss. Amazing. Yeah, Quincy Jones and Allison Krauss. Amazing. Quincy Jones has been around for years. Yeah. He's probably amassed on a well, steady basis. Yeah, I mean, several album, a couple albums anyway with uh, Michael Jackson. He produced, I guess. Uh, so, and Allison Krauss, I like Allison Krauss. In fact, I have a fantastic uh, album with her and uh, Robert Plant together. Mm. It's great. I mean, those two together are, are really good. I, you know, some of her stuff I'm, I, I'm not crazy about. But this album, when she, when she and Robert Plant are together, are just you know, amazing. In fact, I have a, a clip here on, on the computer, but I won't, we don't have time to play it. But uh, then the answer to the other question, what musician uh, who also was a poet and a novelist, now if I add a couple more clues, you might be able to get it. He was born in Canada, and he's Jewish, and he published this novel in 1966, called The Born Losers, in which Kateri Tekawitha plays a main character. Do you have any idea, Gary? <laughs> no. <laughs> Leonard Cohen. Oh, yes. I have heard some of his work. Yes. Definitely yeah. a different kind of artist, uh, very human, and very unique. Right. Didn't know he was Canadian. Yes, he was born in Canada, and uh, of course he was Jewish, but he, and, and he really admired Kateri Tekawitha, who was Catholic, of course, who converted to Catholicism, mm -hmm. and of course she's important to us in the Mohawk Valley, whether you're Catholic or not. She is part of our history. She, she brings tourists to this area. That's why the shrine is so important. Whether you're Catholic or not, the shrine up here is incredibly important to us as a, as a, as a county because of, of the history involved there. And, of course, as usual, we've run out of time, Gary. Um, but I want to thank you for coming on the show today. Your knowledge of music is amazing. always amazes me every time we have a conversation about it. I have to have a book, you know, the, the rock encyclopedia next to me to look things up or Google things to find the answers to them. Or if you're around, I can ask you. But anyway, this has been Valley Vox. I'm, I'm the host, Dan Weaver. We'll be back next week here on WCSS 1490 AM in Amsterdam, WKAJ. 1120 in St. Johnsville, and we'll be talking about Easter 
Be prepared to call in and talk about your Easter memories, what Easter means to you, what you're going to do for Easter this year, and we'll have an open line as well so you can call in and talk about other subjects that are, you know, other than Easter. But, you know, I'd like to talk something about, somewhat about Easter because, you know, if you are a Christian, Easter has to be one of the most important days in your life. So we'll talk about that next week. Thank you for listening today.